Hello my dear Glorians of Standard 10th and welcome to the science class. We begin a new topic today that is chapter 8 Cell Biology and Biotechnology. So let's begin. In this chapter we will be learning about cytology that is cell biology, biology that is biotechnology and its applications, stem cells, important stages in development of agriculture. Now, what is cell? A cell is the smallest structural and functional unit of an organism, which is typically microscopic and consists of a cytoplasm and a nucleus enclosed in a membrane second question what is tissue which are the different functions of tissue so let's answer this question a tissue is a group of cells that have a similar shape and function so when a group of cells come together they form a tissue Tissue improves efficiency with which the organism functions by division of labor. So different types of tissues form different types of organs and hence perform different types of functions. Different tissues perform different specialized functions. Which technique in relation to tissues have you studied in earlier classes? That is in standard 9, you have learned about certain technique which are used in relation to plant tissues. What are they? We have studied the technique of tissue culture in standard 9. Now, let's learn more about tissue culture. Tissue culture is a process that involves exposing plant tissue to a specific regimen of nutrients, hormones and light under sterile in vitro conditions. Now what does this mean? It simply means that you take a part of a plant and expose it to different kinds of nutrients. That means externally you are providing it with rich nutrients, hormones under aseptic conditions where it won't be affected by bacteria, viruses, fungi etc. So all this may produce a clone of the original plant. A clone means an exact Xerox copy of the original mother plant over a very short period of time. Which are the processes involved in tissue culture? There are basically four main steps of tissue culture. First is inoculation of X plant that is a part of the plant that you use and expose it to various conditions as mentioned. Incubation of the culture subculturing that is allowing it to grow in a test tube or in an external environment and then placing it back transplantation of the regenerated plant which will be a clone of the mother plant so we have learned that plant production by technique of tissue culture in the last class stem cells of the plants are used for that purpose now which are the stem cells of the plants you learned last year about meristematic tissue so meristematic tissue what is the function the function is division of cells so basically those are the stem cells of the plants do such stem cells exist in animals yes they do indeed exist in animals also and we're going to learn more about it now there is a diagram on page number 88 in your textbook figure number 8.1 let's learn about what to fill in the boxes the various stages in tissue culture are so it talks about banana tissue culture the answers would be mother plant comb initiation multiplication rooting and shooting primary hardening and secondary hardening 
now we come to the topic of cell biology or cytology cytology or cell biology is the study of structure and function of cells the cell is the basic structural and functional unit of life so therefore cytology is the fundamental most important topic in all of biology so unless we understand how the cells function and what is the cell made up of then nothing can be done related to its research so also cell biology or cytology deals with the study of cell division and many other aspects of the cell research institutes especially dedicated for research on cells are established at pune and bengaluru now which are these the one at pune is called nccs now what is nccs stand for national center for cell science national center for cell science now what does this center do this center is an organization which is aided by the government of india and it was established to facilitate cell biology research in the country the next one and a very important one is at bengaluru it's called in stem in short and what is the full form institute for stem cell science and regenerative medicine it is an organization dedicated to the study of stem cell and regenerative biology now we come to the topic of stem cells now what are stem cells these are special types of cells which are present in the body of multicellular organisms skin cells blood cells heart cells nerve cells liver cells and many other cells of the body are among the hundreds of different types of specialized cells specialized means they are differentiated they know what to do they know which organ they are going to perform, uh, form and they know which function they are going to carry out but what are stem cells now stem cells are cells that have not differentiated or become specialized so before the cells mature and get differentiated and acquire a special structure and function the initial growth of the cells where they are not yet differentiated those are called as stem cells and stem cells are found both in plants animals as well as in us human beings so you can see how a new organism is formed from the zygote that is formed by the union of male and female gamete at the earliest stage of development organism is in the form of mass of cells now what is this group of cells called it's called a blastocyst and this blastocyst so all the cells in that mass are alike almost alike and so they are called as stem cells since they have not yet been differentiated so during further development these cells form any type of cells different types of tissues and hence perform different functions in the body this is the differentiation of stem cells so first when the stem cells are formed they are not differentiated then these stem cells can acquire different structure different shapes according to the organ that they are going to form and that's how they get specialized so stem cells are the building blocks of the human body at the start of life they divide over and over again to create a full person from an embryo as we age they replenish cells in our body so when the cells of our body die or there is wear and tear in the body all that is now replenished by stem cells bone skin and organs stem cells could be powerful tools in in treating injury and illness now stem cells are present in the umbilical cord by which the fetus is joined to the uterus of the mother i hope you remember we have learnt about the umbilical cord in the chapter on reproduction 
Stem cells are also present in the blastocyst stage. Now I showed you the diagram where stem cells are present in the blastocyst and that is in the embryonic stage. Stem cells are present in red bone marrow and adipose connective tissue of adult human beings. And that's how it is possible to produce different types of tissues and degenerated part of any organ can be regenerated or can be replenished with the help of these stem cells. Now more about the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord fluid is located with stem cells. That means it is loaded with stem cells. They can treat cancer, blood diseases like anemia and some immune system disorders which disrupt your body's ability to defend itself. What is the immune system? It is the body's system to fight diseases. So sometimes the body goes through certain immune system disorders where it loses its ability to fight the diseases. And so stem cells can be used successfully to treat these diseases. The fluid is easy to collect and has 10 times more stem cells than those collected from the bone marrow so as mentioned the adult human beings they the stem cells are present in the red bone marrow and the adipose connective tissue now there are certain terms you need to know totipotent stem cells you have learned this term last year now what are totipotent stem cells they can give rise to any of the 220 cell types found in an embryo as well as extra embryonic cells that means they can give rise to all kinds of cells of the body including the umbilical cord the placenta etc now what are pluripotent this word this term is there in your textbook pluripotent stem cells can give rise to all the cell types of the body but not the placenta and multipotent means Multipotent are usually the adult stem cells. They can develop into a limited number of cell types in a particular lineage. That means they don't have much uh, specialization in the sense they will develop only, only into a certain type of cells but not into all the types of cells of the body. Now let's learn about types of stem cells. Okay, let's learn more about embryonic stem cells. These are the first cells to form after a sperm fertilizes an egg. Blank slate cells can become every other kind of the cell in the body. Why are they called blank slate? A blank, you know on a blank slate we can write anything? Exactly. The embryonic stem cells can become every other kind of cell in the body. They can divide and multiply endlessly and they are controversial in medicine because embryos must be destroyed to obtain stem cells. Embryonic stem cells are removed from the embryo in the blastocyst stage that means when they are just formed. In the lab scientists can make them multiply or differentiate. So you can see in your textbook on page number 89, there is a paragraph mentioned on embryonic stem cells. So basically what happens is children, cells of different organs like osteocytes, that means the bone cells, the hepatocytes, that is the liver cells and neurons are formed due to differentiation after the stem cells have differentiated. Embryonic cells before differentiation are called embryonic stem cells. There are, as I mentioned, there are 220 different types of cells in the human body and all those can be formed from the embryonic stem cells. So thus stem cells are the primary type of undifferentiated cells with self-multiplying ability and their parent cells of all human cells. So from there all the types of the cells of the body can be formed and that's why they are called pluripotent because they have the ability to form all the kinds of the cells of the body except for the placenta okay and it has been found that if these stem cells are collected 
well before the beginning of differentiation when does this differentiation start on the 14th day of the developing embryo so that is during the 5th and the 7th day and then it is cultured with certain biochemical stimulus so what does this mean this means that if under proper right circumstances in the laboratory these embryonic stem cells can be nudged can be transformed into desired type of cells and thereby form tissues and then finally form organs so this is what this diagram shows once you retrieve the embryonic stem cells from the blastocyst then in the laboratory under proper sterile conditions these can these that are undifferentiated can then be differentiated into different kinds of cells forming the heart brain liver kidney etc now we come to adult stem cells now adult stem cells are not named because they are more uh, you know they are found in adults that's not the reason the reason why they are called adult is because they are more mature than the embryonic stem cells but because of they are more mature they don't necessarily uh, they don't have the ability or they limit their ability to differentiate okay so that means they can't form all the types of the cells since they are more differentiated they'll be able to form only certain types of cells so mature stem cells that replenish blood skin gut and some other types of cells no so not like all the other types of cells can be formed only certain types of cells since these cells are more mature in some cases can replace cells damaged by illness or injury now these are the only type of cells which are approved by the fda that is food and drug administration for certain for treatment of certain types of blood cancers they have limited ability to become other types of cells so in complete contrast to embryonic cells embryonic cells have full ability to become any type of cells but adult stem cells have limited ability to become other types of cells as well as they have limited ability to divide and multiply so you can see all humans have supply of adult stem cells that constantly repair and replenish the rest of the cells in the body and these are present in the bone marrow and the adipose tissue so from the bone marrow we can retrieve these cells they can form red blood cells and a few other types of cells but not all the types of cells another type of cell this is not mentioned in your textbook but just an additional information induced pluripotent stem cells now what are these now since science has researched so much we should also know what are these cells adult cells that are reprogrammed so they are made to behave and act like embryonic stem cells so children what would be the advantage once we make them behave like embryonic stem cells the advantage would be we are we are kind of um, you can say that we are inducing pluripotency so by inducing pluripotency now these adult stem cells who are now will be able to behave like embryonic stem cells and so they can form different kinds of cells of the body so can be made from skin blood and other adult cells from their embryonic like state can be further altered to become any other type of cell and good potential use in medicine but still a new area of research so cells are taken from an adult tissue they are nudged and induced in a lab to be pluripotent so they start behaving like embryonic stem cells and grown or differentiated in a culture in this video we're going to discuss how undifferentiated cells such as stem cells and it differentiates into other cell types that carry out specific functions all these cells specialized cells we'll take a look at some examples of specialized cells in order to make a complex organism, 
whether it's a mouse or a mushroom, need lots of different types of cells. Just like how a building is made from lots of different materials. Let's start at the beginning. Animals, life starts when a sperm cell combines with an egg cell. These two cells are highly specialized. It means they have specific sizes, shapes, and subcellular structures to help them carry out their functions. For example, the sperm cell, very small, its only function is to transport DNA from the father. However, it does have lots of mitochondria, which provide the energy it needs to move its tail. Egg cell, meanwhile, much larger, that holds many of the nutrients needed to start a new organism. Importantly though, both sperm and egg cells only contain half the genetic material of a normal cell. This is so that once they combine, we'll have the normal amount of DNA. The resulting cell then divides into two, then again into four, and so on, to form a group of identical cells. Cells such as this are called stem cells, because they are completely undifferentiated and have the capacity to specialize into any type of cell, such as a nerve cell or a muscle cell. Stem cells that are taken from this stage in development are known as embryonic stem cells, and scientists can use them for all sorts of stuff, as we'll see in a minute. Getting back to our organism, though, as it further develops, some of its cells will start to differentiate. It's a term you need to know, and it's a process by which cells become specialized for their role. For example, in animals, cells could differentiate into nerve cells, which we'll see in a later video, muscle cells, which are long so that they can contract and contain lots of mitochondria to provide all the energy that they need for contraction, sperm cells, as we've already seen. Once an animal is fully developed like this, most of its cells are specialized and lose the ability to differentiate anymore. The few cells that can still differentiate are used for replacing lost cells, such as skin cells, blood cells. One of the remaining undifferentiated cell types, called adult stem cells, are found in the bone marrow. Even they can only differentiate into different types of blood cells. In plants, things are a bit different. They also have specialized cells, such as root hair cells designed to collect water and nutrients, phloem cells to transport those nutrients, and xylem cells to transport the water. However, the parts of a plant where growth occurs, called the meristems, don't ever fully differentiate, and so stay as stem cells throughout the plant's life. This means that we can take a small cutting from a plant and use it to grow clones quickly and cheaply. This means that we can replicate rare species to reduce their risk of extinction, and to grow identical crop plants that have desirable characteristics such as large fruits. Okay, now that we've taken a look at differentiation and at stem cells in plants, take a closer look at stem cells in humans. There are two types of animal stem cells that you need to know about. Embryonic stem cells, which are found in the early embryo and can differentiate into any type of cell the adult stem cells, which are found in the bone marrow, can only differentiate into different types of blood cells. Once we've isolated one of these stem cells, we need to clone it in the laboratory. We have a collection of identical clones. Excitement around stem cells is that they have the capacity to form any cell type, and we can potentially use them to replace any damaged cell in the body, so it could cure many diseases. One example of this that's already in use 
is in patients with faulty blood cells. We can replace by transferring adult stem cells from a healthy person's bone marrow to the patient. Fortunately, adult stem cells are limited to fixing diseases of blood cells. That's all that they can differentiate into. We could do the same with the embryonic stem cells, though. It could potentially cure hundreds of diseases. For example, by replacing nerve cells of paralyzed people, the insulin-producing cells in people with diabetes. One of the problems, though, is that as the stem cells are made in another organism, such as the human who donated them, the patient's body may recognize them as being foreign and so try to destroy them as if they were a pathogen. One way to overcome this is therapeutic cloning, which an embryo could be made to have the same genetic material as the patient who needs the stem cell treatment. Thus, any stem cells taken from that embryo wouldn't be rejected by the patient, as it wouldn't be seen as foreign. There are risks involved, though. For example, there is a small risk that the stem cells could pick up a virus while being grown in the laboratory, and then be transported into the patient, causing even more disease. There are also ethical issues with stem cell research. Some people object to the research as they feel that the human embryos that are used have the potential for human life, so it shouldn't be used in this way. However, the embryos that are used are generally the unwanted ones from fertility clinics, that would otherwise be destroyed. Many countries tightly control or ban stem cell research. In the UK, though, it's legal, as long as strict criteria are followed. With this, we come to an end of today's class. And I end today's class with a beautiful quote from Albert Einstein. Everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish, by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. So everybody has their own capacities, their own talents, which they need to understand and they need to grow and progress in that direction. Now, a new thought I have recently seen on KBC. Those who see KBC will know what I'm talking about. This is something very nice I came across when Amitabh Bachchan said, can someone tell me what is SD plus M? So what is SD plus M? I know the equation SD plus M is equal to SJ. But what does this equation mean? Think about it. I'll give you a few seconds. ST plus M means ST stands for social distancing and M stands for mask. So social distancing plus mask gives you Surakshit Jeevan. So stay healthy, stay safe, study well, read the chapter well. God bless you.